Hello YouTubers! It's been a while since I've done a video and I thought I would update you on my solar. Now that I've had it up and running for several years, made a few upgrades, thought I would uh, uh, just update you, show you what I've got going on. As usual, my little dog is no longer little, but she's always right here near me, never goes very far away, and we have two new ones, Bear and Maxine. So, I have upgraded, as you can see, from making my own solar panels, which worked just fine. They worked great. The problem I had was the backing. I was using a, what do you call it, uh, a, a resin, a fiberglass resin or an epoxy for bars, things like that. It worked to hold them against the glass. Everything seemed to be solid until it got good and hot and then it would just warp away. So I tried using a backer board behind that to help hold it still. Still too much flex, wound up breaking my solar panels, or the solar cells. So they gave up after a while. So as you can see, I've got two 165 watt, I forget who makes them, solar panels. They are, Everbright Solar. I don't think this thing will let me turn it sideways, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, and there's the ratings, 22 volts, uh, 106, 165 waters each. Now, the stand, I built that myself. It completely breaks down. You'll look in between the solar panels here. They fold onto each other and they unpin from the stand and then I can just put them away for transport for RVing. And then the stand stands up. And I chose the nominal slant for the, for the panels to be at uh, 25 degrees because it's 20 degrees in the summer and 35 in the winter. So I figured this is a good nominal angle for the, for the stand for the entire year. And it's worked just fine for the small setup that I've got going on. It's way too much power, which is what we need when we're running our equipment inside during the daytime. Oh, before we go into the RV, let's just show you real quick. One of the things that I did on my own, as you can see, the uh, connections are the, the uh, MC4 connections. And I've got two Y's, so they're running parallel. And then I've got it connected to run the power out to a uh, 30 amp extension cord. So more than enough amperage rating for the amps that it puts out. And then as you can see, it connects to the RV via household plug that are sealed with silicone so that they don't corrode and stuff being out in the weather all the time. So... What that means is I can add an extension cord and run this away from the RV, park it in the shade, and run as much extension cord as I need. Of course, there's power loss involved in that, and we experienced that this spring, but it didn't seem to affect what we had going on all that much. So, interior of the RV, just to show you what I've got going on. Now, I ordered in the spring of... of... Uh, 2014, it's now 2017, I ordered a Renogy Tracer 4210 MPPT charge controller. And if you can see it, there it is. And it is flashing full battery. It's full. It's not, uh, yeah, it's flashing. And so it's, it's, it's in its full charge state. I've got the controller right here. There's the controller, 13.1. If you look out there at the solar panels, they're sitting at, well, 13.1. So that's what it's showing on the battery side. And that's the solar panels themselves. And it's pulling zero amps because the sun has effectively gone down where we're at. But I also have this old, what is it, Sun Force? Uh, 30 amp 12 volt charge controller so I've got seven batteries on this RV three are in the front two of which are the deep cycle house batteries if you will you see it's showing as a full charge that's the upper green light and then uh, and the lower light is the the charge indicator 
the upper red light is the power indicator, so it's still getting power from the from the panels, and it's actually pulling 0.3 amps, so it's doing a maintenance charge as well. Now that one's a pretty crappy charge controller. I'm gonna wind up changing that out here after not too long, but it seems to do the job. It doesn't overcharge, but it does undercharge in the winter time. It doesn't do quite as good of a job because the batteries are cold and it needs a higher charge rate. Um, like the uh, Renogy does back there. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, I've got seven batteries. Three are in the front. One is the battery for the engine starting. And that one uh, is on that same bank, but separated. So it receives a charge, but it doesn't share its charge with the uh, two house batteries that are 100 amp hour deep cycle uh, AGM flooded batteries. And then in the back of the RV, I've got a four battery bank that is, and I can actually show you those ones. It's not too difficult to get to. <clears throat> there they are right there, housed in the, uh, under the bed, and they're a little dusty. They've been in there a long time, but they are, uh, some pretty heavy duty batteries and they do really well. Now I've got the, uh, battery cables that come off of it and they run that that one is completely isolated runs strictly off the Renogy and the only thing it powers is this power inverter right here and there it is 13 volts it's showing now the length of the run that I've got goes from the kitchen all the way back it goes into the bathroom, down along the floor, out through the back, and then along the floor and into that battery box. It's a little bit too long of a run for the gauge of wire that I'm running, but it does run coffee pots, griddle, all that stuff without any real issue until the battery actual voltage drops to around 11.8, um, and then it reads 11.2 on the power drive, and then it starts to beep. But it doesn't ever really run out of juice. It's just showing an, uh, a low voltage on that. So that is my current solar setup. And I've got, well, it's kind of hard to see because I don't really have enough light, but there's a, a charge splitter. Uh, it's a, a pegboard bank that I've got going on and that's where, where my uh, connections plug into. If I wanted to add more later on, I could. But that is basically my solar setup. And I just thought I would update and share on that. It's uh, fairly simple. During the, you can see like my TV's always got power. Everything's got power all the time and I hardly use the RV, but when we do go out camping and stuff, we just, we don't run out of juice. As soon as I set those solar panels up, we're in good shape. So that's a little update on what I've got going on to give kind of a review on this Renogy charge controller, which, I mean, it's kind of pointless now because I don't even make it anymore. It's one of those things that once you've got it, you're stuck with it. And uh, it's worked pretty good. Haven't really had any issues with it. I've got it in this confined space, which I was worried about overheating, but I've never run into that problem. It's it just, it's always functioned correctly. So if you'll notice, that my charge going out, the cables, you, you, you'd think, oh my gosh, he's got such small cables going to his battery. Well, those are actually a high voltage cable that's rated for more amps than the charge controller can put out or receive. So in that respect, I'm a little bit overkill, but it looks like it's not, but it is. It really is. It flows everything it needs, keeps the batteries charged. Um, under full sun, like I was saying, it's pulling zero amps now because it has no sun, but that, that little meter right there shows 13.1, and I've seen this as high as 17 amps, and nothing's gotten hot, nothing's got, nothing shut down, so it sends all of the power that's available to the battery bank when it senses a load. It'll go right into just dumping it out to the batteries, which I was really impressed with. That was one of the features that I really, really wanted so that I know when I'm running off of my batteries, running things off of my batteries, that it's gonna get the maximum amount of amperage 
from the solar panels as possible. And 17 amps on all this cable that I've got run is pretty darn good considering that the, uh, the panels are, are rated combined at 18 and a half, almost 19 amps. So that is my little update video. Uh, comment down below if you have any other questions, see if I can answer them. Not a lot I can uh, add to this other than that. There are power supplies that are run on the RV all the time. They're constantly on. Um, so that's, you know, that with those panels out there, my batteries are always, always, always fully charged. And I've had those batteries for seven years now. So different charge systems, different solar panels, different things over the time. I imagine I'm not going to get too much more life out of those. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.